Hello, Keith Rucker here at VengeMachinery.org. Guys, I got some exciting news for the shop. Uh, if you've been following my channel for very long, you're no doubt aware that I have this big 28-inch Monarch lathe that I picked up several years ago. In fact, uh, pretty much when I brought my very first batch of machinery into the shop, uh, I was able to pick up several different machines from, uh, from an estate over in Alabama, and this was one of the machines in that group of machines that I brought in. And honestly, for the last almost three years now, this machine has pretty much just been sitting in the shop. I haven't really done much with it. And uh, well, I have done a little bit with it. We've cleaned it up, we've done some painting. I really haven't done anything mechanical to it. And what's really been holding me back more than anything else is I've had an electrical issue with this machine. And I knew it wasn't anything just overly crazy complicated, but you know, doing wiring, particularly electrical control wiring, motor control wiring, it's not my strong point. Fortunately for me, last weekend, I had a viewer, uh, Nils Lima from up in Minnesota, who was gonna be coming down, going to Florida, asked if he could come by the shop, and he happened to mention, he said, hey, by the way, I'm an electrician. Is there anything that I can help you with? Ding, 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 ding. I said, yes, absolutely. I said, how are you with motor controls? He says, that's my specialty. So Nils came in last uh, weekend, and we spent a good bit of time doing some troubleshooting on this machine, getting the electrical problems figured out. And guys, here's the good news right here. Watch this. She fires up. So this is where we spent a good bit of our time last uh, weekend trying to figure this out. And I say we, it was really Nils who was doing all the figuring out here. A um, little bit about the machine, the history of the machine. When I got it, supposedly it had been running before I, it came into my shop. I never saw the machine run though because by the time that I got there, they already had the three-phase power disconnected from the shop. So I really wasn't able to, to test it out or anything like that. Uh, however, the guy that I'm working with on this, I knew him, I trusted him. He's a friend of mine. He was a friend of the previous owner. Uh, he had seen this machine run. He knew that it was operational. So, you know, I trusted him on it. When I brought it home, uh, we wired her into the, my power grid here, and when I pushed the button, nothing happened. And after doing a little bit of investigating, I pretty quickly figured out what was going on. So this machine, when it was originally shipped from the factory, it came with some accessories on it. Uh, one being a tracing attachment, which has long since disappeared. Tracing attachment, of course, had a little stylus. It's kind of pre-CNC days, had a little stylus that followed a template, and a hydraulic system would move the cutter in and out as it moved along. Uh, that's all gone. The other thing that was on the lathe was this uh, automatic oiling system that mostly lubricated the tracing attachment, which was no longer even on the machine. And it was this Frankenstein looking box that mounted on the end, literally had a time clock on the inside of it, like an old time clock that you would sit there and, and put pins and stuff in that it would trip switches that would put inject a little bit of oil into a certain line at a certain time. Well, when I got it, that had actually been hit with a forklift or something like that. It was about halfway torn off the machine. And I just made the, the executive decision that I really didn't need it anymore. We removed it from the machine. Uh, but what I didn't realize is when I removed it from the machine, there was some electrical wiring going to that. And I think that when we did that, there were some, some safety features that were built into it that was preventing some things from happening in the box here. And after doing some, some looking, we do have the schematics here. Uh, they're a little bit hard to read. It's a 50 year old piece of paper, uh, but we were able to do some tracing and found finally figured out that these two wires right here, uh, there was a pressure switch built into the lubricator down there that would basically prevent the machine from turning on until it detected that the uh, electrical, some type of switch was switched inside that box center, making sure that it was working. Um, even though it really wasn't working, evidently, the switch in there, at least, it may have been actually tied together in the box is what I kind of suspect. But when I removed it, we, we took that pressure switch out of the system. All we had to do was just jump wire it here, hot wire it, and uh, that problem was solved. But it was, a lot of wires in here. I had no idea which, which ones need to be done. Nils was able to do some tracing things down and looking at the schematics, we got that figured out. I also had a few other issues going on in here. The uh, transformer, uh, which basically takes a 220 volt power and it uh, brings it down to 110 
to run the coils on the starters and, and also to send 110 power to things like the, uh, the uh, lubricator as well as a work light and so forth. The transformer was literally falling apart. We got it to fire up and then it just kind of quit. We started doing some tracing and figured out that, hey, the transformer's kind of uh, sketchy on here. So we replaced that. And then the other issue that we had was up in here, there was a disconnect in here that was an old school, uh, had basically uh, knife type fittings in there. And uh, there was some issues going on there where things weren't really making good contact and that was giving us some more problems. We ended up replacing that. It was a fuse box and we, we basically just put a breaker in here so that uh, uh, if we did trip a fuse, instead of having to go replace a physical fuse, uh, we could just hit the breaker in here and uh, all would be good. But <laughs> as is typically the case, when you start doing electrical work, it is slow going. There's nothing fast about doing electrical work. Really and truly, we probably had, our Nils probably had close to eight hours into just working this thing out. Tried to get some video of him in here working, but he, uh, he said, oh, you put my hands on there, but he didn't really want to be online. So we ended up not doing any video of him doing anything. Uh, but regardless, Nils is the man. He got this thing figured out and everything is working. We also cleaned up the coils in here and cleaned up the contacts on it. Uh, there was some, you know, just where it had been worn. Uh, particularly this reverse one here, it was really buzzing loud. Uh, but you know, you just take that coal out, clean it up on some sandpaper, get all that old, um, you know, just patina or whatever cleaned off, and you know, it works just great now. We're up and going. Let's go back around and look a little bit more on the lathe itself now that we can actually run it and see it. So, back over here on the front again, uh, we hit forward. <laughs> It kicks right in. Uh, reverse works is good. I don't like to hit reverse while that motor's spinning down, but uh, it spins right back up. And uh, my contacts, uh, even though the coolant pump is not on here right now, it all works as well as even the contactor for the tracing attachment uh, isn't on there anymore either. So there we go in reverse now. So uh, all's good there. Zoom you in here a little bit more. We'll. Uh, Get it going back and forward. Uh, over here we have a selector where we can select the, the spindle speed and there's a high range and a low range, uh, which you adjust adjust right here. Right now I have it on the fastest, fastest speed in high mode, which is uh, 1500 RPMs. And uh, she fires right up. I can take it down to the low range this will be 125 RPMs. And then if I want to change gears, we'll just take it down to the lowest speed. There we go, and then put it in uh, low mode there. That's 12 RPMs. So we got a nice range of speeds on this machine that we can uh, move between. We'll just uh, take it back up to about 655. Medium speed for this lathe, and uh, I've got it right now set where we're on the feeds. Come over here to the, come over here to the carriage, engage that, we can see That's this uh, bottom shaft down here. It's not turning. That's something I'm going to have to get in here and figure out what's going on. So I'm really excited to have this machine. At least uh, we're in a place now where we can kind of continue on with this restoration. And I say restoration. I'm really not restoring this machine. Yes, I am kind of repainting it, cleaning it up, and so forth. My understanding was from the previous owner that this machine was in good shape, that it ran great, it actually turned real accurately. I'm taking them on their word for that now. Of course, we'll check that out as we move forward uh, with this. But I'm hoping that we can get it up and going 
where I can just uh, get it uh, where it's usable pretty quickly. I am probably going to disassemble some here on the the saddle and uh, just check things out, make sure uh, like all my lubrication points are working right and look for any excessive wear or anything in there. Get this part cleaned up and painted. Uh, and there's a few little mechanical things I need to work on. I've got the uh, compound off of it right now. I've got some stuff I'm going to have to kind of rework a little bit there, but nothing major. Down here, uh, there's a door and there's a hydraulic tank and pump in here. This uh, I'm not exactly sure what all it does, but it does, I think, work somehow into the controls, the hydraulic power. Um, and I've got a, I've got a little bit of a leak down here in, in one of my lines, so I really need to kind of take this out apart. Probably a hose needs to be replaced, is my guess, but uh, I've got to get down there and figure that out, what's going on. Uh, belts over here, there's only one belt on the machine right now and it's kind of loose so I need to find the right size belt and get the three belts on there like it should be. But you know, really and truly, uh, hopefully we can have this machine up and going without too terribly much uh, trouble. So down on this end of the machine, uh, we got the tailstock and uh, if you remember when I got this machine, I actually bought this machine, it did not have a tailstock on it, which was a little bit concerning, but hey, the price was right, so I went ahead and bought it uh, with the idea. It actually came with a tailstock that was about the right size, but the, it didn't match up with the, the ways, and I was planning on making a new base for it and adapting that uh, tailstock to this machine. However, I had a viewer up uh, north uh, this past year contact me. He had a uh, very similar model Monarch that he was scrapping out. Uh, there were some issues with it. It had a tail stock and had a steady rest. And uh, I was able to work out a deal with him to get these parts and bring them down here. Now these do have a few little issues in them as well. Uh, one being that this, uh, the, the piece inside of here is a little bit unusual. This was an option for Monarch. It has a built-in uh, live center in here. Uh, doesn't have a Morse taper for like a chuck or whatever. My plan is, is I'm just going to make a whole new piece in here or maybe adapt this one. I'm going to have to look at it. Uh, but we need to put a Morse taper in there where I can use that properly. Uh, but you know, the nice thing is, is I do have original Monarch parts on here. Uh, the base on it is just a little bit narrow. Everything lines up right. Uh, but the, the ways on the one that it came off of, it was the, the model before this one, I think it was a 61, model 61, this is a model 6, 612. Uh, but while it matches up, evidently uh, the, the base on this one is about a half inch wider. It's not a huge deal, it would be fine like it is, but I may make some modifications to get me a little bit more bearing surface down there as well. Uh, but hopefully this isn't gonna turn into too big of a project and uh, we can get that going uh, without too much trouble. Another one of the challenges that I've got, and I've already been playing around with this a little bit, but there's some leveling screws up underneath here to level the, the bed of the lathe. There's actually eight of them, four on the front, four on the back, and uh, I've been trying to get those out, and they are really, really, really in there tight. Uh, I have to use a, a big three-quarter inch drive ratchet with a cheater bar on it uh, to get those out. I've got a couple of them out already, but I got to work the rest of those out. We'll probably have to re-tap those holes down there, or at least run a chaser tap through it. And I'm probably going to have to get some new screws, but um, that's just going to require some, some muscle. And uh, unfortunately, it's going to take some time to do that. Chip plan here, I've already kind of got it out, cleaned it up. Uh, we got a couple of bins in the sheet metal. I need to do some more banging on that. I've already done a little bit of that uh, and get that all painted back on here. Um, but again, that shouldn't be any, any big trouble at all there. So there you go, just a little quickie update on the big Monarch 28 inch lathe. I'm excited that we are maybe we'll have this uh, as another arsenal in the shop. It's been actually been pretty exciting week or so. We got the Monarch Model K is pretty much finished with, a, with just a few little details, but it's usable like it is. And hopefully we're gonna have this lathe uh, up and going here before too much longer as well, which will give me a nice range of sizes between the 16 inch Monarch and uh, the big 28 inch Monarch here for being able to do whatever jobs come into the shop. So anyway, real excited about that. I want to give you guys an update. And uh, again, thank you so much for Nils for coming down in here and helping me spend the time with me to help me go through there and, and work out the issues in here. It turned out it wasn't anything terribly bad or terribly difficult. It just took time and it took expertise. The time I could have made time for, the expertise I was lacking. 
So uh, Nils really came to the rescue there. And, and again, thank you so much to him. And with that, that'll be a wrap. A little update on the 28-inch Monarch. Thank you guys for watching. As always, uh, leave us some comments. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll catch you next time around.